What's going on guys, it's Michael MGF, and today I'm going to be doing my highly anticipated LEGO Guardians of the Galaxy upgraded minifigure showcase video. And for this video I have Star-Lord, Rocket Raccoon, Groot, Drax the Destroyer, and Gamora, most of which were initially official LEGO minifigures that I then took it upon myself to upgrade and paint and do whatever need be to make them more accurate uh, because it's something I really wanted to do because obviously the LEGO group, they made the minifigures as accurate as I could get them because obviously the LEGO group, they have manufacturing limits, but I myself don't. I can paint whatever I want, so that's what I did, man, and uh, the movie comes out tonight. By the time you're watching this video, I'm actually at Brick Fair, Virginia 2014, and I really hope I'm having a good time chilling out with you guys there, uh, and I'm doing all of this ahead of time to make sure that this video goes up while I'm there and that I don't have to be concerned about doing it afterwards or something like that, because you guys know me. These big videos, I usually like to get them out the day before the movie releases, so that's why I'm doing all this ahead of time, and also, please, I know that you guys over in Europe have already seen the movie. It came out today, actually. Uh, even though it comes out for us like tonight at midnight so if you could just avoid putting spoilers for just a few hours I mean the movie is coming out for us tomorrow I mean that would be heavily appreciated and if you feel the absolute need to post spoilers then please do all cap spoilers and a colon before you start your comment just to avoid uh, uh, people getting it ruined because we're about to see it so just hold off a little bit man that would be appreciated but yeah guys so these minifigures are pretty much me taking all of the LEGO Group's minifigures and upgrading them to the best of my ability. However, the only exception is Groot because Groot is entirely my own minifigure with a heavy amount of sculpting and an extreme amount of painting, but I really am so overly satisfied with the way he turned out in the end. I can't wait to show him for to you guys, but he will be the last one, so stick around all the way through this video as there is some awesomeness ahead. And uh, without further ado, let's get started. Alright, and starting off with Emmett from the Lego Movie, or actually Star-Lord from Guardians, uh, this minifigure actually has the least amount of work done to him as a Lego group. I mean, coming out of the box with those two sets Star-Lord was included in, Lego did a pretty freaking good job. And obviously, like I already mentioned in the beginning of this video, Lego does have manufacturing limits. Did I mention that at the beginning of this video? I don't know, but Lego does have their own manufacturing limits, so I pretty much went beyond that. Painted his arms and legs, along with some various details on his helmet. Those details on his helmet basically just include, you, can, you might notice, a ton of different black lines. A lot of outlining went on here. I added some gray right here, which have little bolts uh, painted on top of them. I have a little, uh, couple little breathers that I painted on the front there, some lines on the around his eyes there, and uh, some things like that. I also uh, redid his uh, facial expression. You'll notice that he now has a more aggressive mouth rather than the, uh, you know, the smirk that is given in the Lego set. So that's something I added to the head. And also included with Star-Lord here, I gave him his own uh, painted hair piece to make the uh, hair color a little bit more accurate than uh, what was originally provided in the Lego sets. And also, uh, you'll notice that his arms are fully painted uh, including his gauntlet and shoulder pad on his right arm and then various different little lines on the uh, left arm and I'm really happy that I did that. Those were actually last minute details I just added I think just yesterday so uh, I'm definitely glad I did those. They look really great. You have straps on both sides of this gauntlet. His blasters are actually painted in, uh, in a uh, dark uh, gray color and then you have the lime green color on the front because obviously his guns do shoot out green lasers so that's something I really wanted to add with Star-Lord was make sure his, uh, his blasters are green and they're definitely pretty awesome and you'll notice that on his legs uh, Star-Lord he actually has I'll just take this blaster away for now it's not going back on uh, his, he actually has the two little uh, thrusters on his legs there and those are something I really wanted to add and uh, they are on both sides of his legs all fully painted along with uh, the details on the sides of his legs and the back all of which once again painted uh, literally the only part of this minifigure that I did not work on would be the uh, front of his torso actually the front and back of his torso so so, I mean, I did do a lot to Star-Lord, but not as much as what you're about to see with the rest of the Guardians. Um, but, I mean, Chris Pratt, who voiced Emmett in the Lego movie, is now the head of the Guardians of the Galaxy cinematic franchise. That's awesome, and I can't wait to see him in this film. But uh, now let's get a better look at Gamora. And Zoe Zaldana has finally made her way into the Marvel Cinematic Universe as Gamora... <laughs> Thanos is... 
I probably shouldn't say that. Even though it's common comic book knowledge, I probably shouldn't say that. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so Gamora is literally uh, a completely new figure aside from the head. The head, Lego actually did a great job betraying uh, Zoe Zaldana's green face here. It actually looks really, really great. Uh, I already showed this in my review of the Milano Spaceship Rescue, but uh, it is literally the exact same head from that set because Lego did an excellent job on it. And uh, that also includes the alternative facial expression. Uh, if I can get the head to twist around around here and uh, so yeah like I said the head it remains completely untouched it's a great head and it was exactly what I was looking for with my own portrayal of Gamora so uh, putting the hair back on and by the way I even I say the entire minifigure is redone except for the head because I actually uh, the highlights you see in her hair I actually went over with my own paint instead of uh, sticking with the color that Lego had for their printing um, but yeah so then also her torso and legs these are the two things that I worked on the most and obviously she has a new pair of lime green arms which were not in the actual set either um, this is obviously a completely new outfit. This is the outfit that, that she wore before she too got her own uh, red outfit that I assume takes place toward the end of the movie when they all get suited up in those red jumpsuits, whatever they are. Um, but yeah, so this this is the front of her torso. This is this torso piece is actually an Aerialite curved torso. If you uh, are interested in getting your own uh, curved torso for female characters, you can get them on AerialiteCustoms.com. So it's AerialiteCustoms.com. I know some people, some of you guys have trouble uh, making out what I say uh, when I use that name, but the torso is fully painted and as accurate as, as I can get it using various different blue metallic colors the lime green on the upper port portion of her torso along with uh, more greens here and the uh, certain like netting that she has on the front of her clothing and uh, the curved torso really tops it off however the back of her torso does not have anything on it really aside from uh, some minor paint details there because literally I couldn't find a photo of her back I could not and uh, so I, d I, d I don't know what goes on her back and uh, according to the Hasbro figure there is nothing on her back so I decided that this would just have to do for now and I might upgrade it sometime in the future but you'll also notice that her legs are fully painted and honestly look really great once again using more metallic blue color you notice she has these two little buckles here which are really great with the black lines running through them and uh, it's very faint but there is actually a strap painted on there as well including uh, you have all these different little details running all along the legs once again fully painted in various different little straps as well and uh, some of these straps actually have black lines running through them so that was pretty cool to paint on um, but other than that that's really it for Gamora and she has the standard sword but this time instead of having the uh, square base uh, to, on the uh, top of the hilt. It actually is the one of those circular uh, based swords. So yeah, man, there's Gamora. We're the freaking guardians of the galaxy. All right, and here we go with, the, I think, easily the most badass character so far in the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe. We have Rocket Raccoon. This minifigure has a full... Uh, revamp going on here. Now, granted, I really got a hands of the LEGO group. They did a great job with Rocket. They have manufacturing limitations. They can only use certain colors. They can only print certain things, and I totally understand that. They did great for what they had available, um, but I obviously am taking it a lot further and making him even more accurate to this little CGI raccoon voice by Bradley Cooper, because what I did was primarily was I gave him a full recoloring. He, he is now a grayish dark brown. This color was not easy to achieve. It took a lot of mixing, but when I finally got it, I was like, oh my god, this is going to look really good. And I'm really happy with the end result, as you can see here. The entirety of the front of his face is all completely redone as well. His eyes are smaller. He has eyebrows now. I redid all the fur on the front, added some tan going within it. You'll notice he has little uh, holes on his nose there. He now has a mouth which to give him a little smirk. That was not there originally. And uh, he has uh, the, the pauldron on the sides of, it, of this mold is all are all outlined as well. You'll notice... I I painted all of this orange and I even added all this detail on the back of his neck and uh, this is all one piece. The shoulder, the neck, and the head is all one piece if you have yet to see the Rocket Raccoon minifigure, uh, you know, before I did all this detail. Um, and so one thing I do want to show you before we continue is uh, Rocket Raccoon, once again, if you have not seen it, is uh, his tail is actually one solid mold like this. Just to give you an idea so that it's not, you know, as confusing to you guys as I explain what I'm about to explain about the legs. Now the legs, um, I actually fully painted as well legs obviously there isn't a lot of detail going on but if you look at photos of rocket there isn't a lot of detail to add so I pretty much painted on uh, his exposed feet and then his shorts now his shorts once again as you just saw include uh, the tail uh, belt belt piece thing like you already saw the tail is actually molded onto the belt piece so I pretty much made the two look separate even though they're not by making the tail its own unique color and then by also making uh, the actual belt area that you saw its own unique color so all of this is all battle damage I think Lego they did a fantastic 
fantastic job on the uh, torso. So I didn't really have to do a lot to the torso. All I did was add some battle damage, and then I added some battle damage on the shorts that you just that you see I painted here. So. Hopefully that explains it, and also his gun. Now, I think LEGO, uh, what they did with his gun is fine. I think I, I couldn't see them doing anything else. It was a little bit too big, though. I weighed the minifigure down a ton. You could not stand up Rocket Raccoon for your life. So what I did was, even though this gun is not in the movie, even though you'll never see him use this gun, and even though this gun is not from uh, anything Marvel, I still thought a Brick Arms Pulse Rifle was a bit more his size, and it looked a little bit more, uh, you know, it just looks better on Rocket, if you ask me. So I took a Gunmetal Brick Arms Pulse Rifle, painted some black highlights and painted in some metallic blue uh, areas that you can see here and uh, I think it looks a lot better for Rocket. Once again, it's not actually in the movie, but it's still things like this that I decisions like this that I occasionally make for my minifigures is always for the best and um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for Rocket Raccoon. I can't wait to see this half cybernetic CGI Bradley Cooper Raccoon. It's going to be fantastic. So uh, yeah, Rocket Raccoon, he was actually a lot harder to paint than you might think. And for our second to last, we have Drax the Destroyer, and this guy, uh, this was a lot of painting, I have to say, um, because obviously in the set, Drax is gray. In the movie, Drax is gray, but he has a green tint to his skin, and I'll, I'll put some photos while I'm talking about this, it's just... I mean, yeah, he is gray. He's like half gray and and then half green in the in the movie. Or maybe he's just completely gray with a green tint. I don't know. But I mean, you look at certain shots in the trailers and the lighting, and he looks green. I mean, Hasbro made him green. So I don't know what is right and what is wrong in terms of Drax's color. So I did what I thought was right and what I thought looked best and accurate to the comics because Drax is just more recognizable green. He's green in the comics. He always was, and I. Uh, he, I don't know, he just, he looks better green, and I knew he would, so that's what I did here, regardless of accuracy, this time I decided, okay, Drax is green in the comics, he's got some sort of a green tint in the movie, so I think I'm gonna make him green, that's what I did here, so, just wanna put it out there right now, Lego is not at fault for making him gray, I don't blame them for anything there, I totally think it was the right way to go, it's just he still looks better green, in my own opinion, regardless of how accurate it might not be. Uh, or how inaccurate it is. Regardless, this minifigure is, uh, l the torso, arms, and head are fully Legos, except I repainted the entirety of them. They were completely like gray, and then I weaved around every single tattoo you see on Drax. This was quite complex to do, very tedious, because you look at this, this was all gray, and I weaved around every single little tattoo that you see on Drax, and it was not easy. It was a lot of really small uh, paint dabbing. It was it was nuts to do, but I'm really happy with the result because it really did work out, and I wasn't sure if it was going to, but uh, I weaved around every tattoo, and he looks like a boss. So his his uh, knives, actually, they're no longer the uh, standard Lego knives. These are actually Brick Arms uh, combat knives that I then painted the uh, blades silver, and uh, because Drax's, uh, uh, his, his knives in the movie are slightly curved, so I mean, I thought it was a little bit closer, and just generally, uh, they look a lot better than uh, standard Lego knives, so I decided that uh, combat knives are actually a really, you know, definitely the way to go with Drax, and also that was recommended for me, uh, recommended for me to do by TR Legos fan, my good friend, but um, yeah, so the legs are completely painted as well, I mean, just to give you a look, the, these are fully painted, the entirety of these legs, buckles, lines, and everything, all fully painted, and I, I mean, that's pretty much all I can say about them. The belt is also fully painted on the back and on the front and uh, both of which are fully accurate to Drax's belt in the movie and uh, so I'm really happy with the way the legs turned out. Painting his legs was actually a last minute decision. I wasn't sure if I was going to have to stick with the dark red legs that were provided in the set or if I would have time to do this. I'm glad I had time to do this because this looks a lot better because uh, obviously Drax is wearing, uh, you know, he, he has two different outfits in the movie and this is obviously the first one he's wearing in the movie uh, before getting those dark red pants. So, I mean, yeah, the legs have turned out great and hopefully you guys think so too but now we can move on to I think what you guys are all here for Groot all right and here's the floral colossus himself Groot now I man you would think that this is the most challenging minifigure I have ever had to make but believe it or not it actually isn't and I'll get into the reasons just as to why in a minute um, but you guys know I don't do a lot of sculpting I don't I, I really don't on my minifigures I use some pretty insane techniques on some of my minifigures but I usually don't do a lot of sculpting so walking into this minifigure I was like how am I going to do this so I um, I if you guys wanted to know what material I use 
used to sculpt Groot's head and his chest and his back, I used green stuff. Green stuff is a fantastic material and uh, it dries so well. I swear Groot's head, it dried harder than ABS plastic and uh, I think that, that that's great because, uh, you know, the sturdier the better and not just that, but it just makes it so much easier to sand and work with once it's dry and it, it, it's great. It's a great material and I'm so glad that I used it and um, it, Groot honestly turned out to be everything I wanted this figure to be and more and I was so so disappointed by what the LEGO group did with Groot in the Nowhere Escape mission set. I understand that they wanted to make him really easy to play with and you know be able to have Rocket on his shoulders but that still doesn't excuse the fact that he doesn't even look like Groot at all. So I did what they should have done. I made a new head mold and I repurposed the Toy Story Woody arms and legs to make them look, you know, the you know, perfect for Groot, perfect on Groot. And I thought that, you know, this would have been the perfect opportunity to bring back the Woody arms and legs for uh, Groot, but the Lego group just didn't take it. And I, um, so I did this and I am so really, I, I'm just really proud of this minifigure, but um, getting back to what I said about Groot originally with the fact that he's not the most hardest, the hardest minifigure I've ever had to do, Granted, the sculpting was pretty insane, like three straight nights of sculpting and, uh, you know, sanding. It was it was pretty nuts sculpting the head, yeah, but, I mean, the actual wooden pattern you, you see all over Groot, this was fully free-handed, and I just completely made up the pattern as I went along. I was not restricted. I didn't have to be accurate. I didn't have to be any of those things that I usually am with my minifigures because... How is any human being on this planet going to uh, accurately paint on Groot's uh, wooden pattern line for line? So I basically had full creative freedom when painting Groot, and that made it a great experience for me as a customizer. And uh, it just made the minifigure not only a huge challenge to make, but it just made it, like I said, a great experience because I honestly was, like I said, you know, I had full freedom over what I was doing. I didn't have to stick to a certain pattern. It wasn't like Falcon from Captain America the Winter Soldier. I wasn't painting a really intricate uh, mechanical wing pattern. I wasn't painting uh, webbing on a Spider-Man suit. I just, I could do whatever I wanted with, you know, adding green tints along the way. You'll notice all over Groot, there are various green tints all over the place because he does have a lot of green on him on top of the wooden pattern. And um, so just, just to clarify, his head is fully sculpted by me. His chest is fully sculpted by me along with the back of him. And um, all of which I have to say turned out great. And uh, I took a lot of different tips from various different sculptors, not just from the LEGO community, but also from just people uh, who, you know, work on Warhammer minifigures and people, uh, you know, that work with green stuff on a regular basis because they helped me tremendously, those types of people, when sculpting Groot because, like I said, I don't do a lot of sculpting and when I, when this was, was finished, I was so overly happy with it. I think when I really started to see Groot coming out of this was when I painted in the eyes after the, the sculpt itself dried because while sculpting Groot, I um I, I can't really explain it. I'll show a photo right in the corner here. Um, but it looked he kind of looked like a bug while I was working on him because there was some yellow behind uh, the actual sculpt because I was sculpting onto a yellow head, so he kind of looked like a bug the way I was I was painting it. And then finally, when all that dried and I was and I sanded it and then I painted it, it started to look like Groot, and I was like, holy crap, this is gonna work out because uh, I actually started on Groot's uh, legs. I had his legs and arms done before I actually finished the head, so I pretty much made half the minifigure and then just prayed that the other half would work out and thank God it did because this minifigure, I am so beyond proud of this, this minifigure and how it turned out and uh, I, I would say it's easily my best minifigure of 2014 and uh, now just to give you a look, I, I'll, and obviously while you're watching this you're seeing a ton of separate angles because I think this minifigure, I don't do it all, I don't really do it a lot with my own minifigures but usually uh, you know, the separate angles, I, they think, I think the separate angles are definitely worth showing for Groot here but um, yeah, the wooden pattern actually does extend beyond Beyond what you're already seeing right now so that you'll see that it, it actually goes right right past the sides and just right into the insides of the leg where you really can't see it because obviously it would look really weird if I didn't paint that on but I mean yeah obviously the uh, the wooden pattern with the green tints does not extend uh, onto the sides of the torso but I mean it still looks really consistent and just overall everything I wanted this minifigure to be now I'm not I can't I'm not really talking a lot about how I painted the uh, pattern itself because like I said it was actually easier for me than you might think now now, it was time consuming. I need to say that. The painting the wooden pattern was freaking time consuming, but it wasn't 
overly difficult, like I said, because I wasn't following a strict pattern. But I mean, yeah, guys, so that's pretty much it for Groot. Here's a look at the top of his uh, head if you want to get a look at that. And uh, everything is fully painted by me, and his head, torso, and the back of his torso are all fully sculpted by me. And I am so proud of this minifigure. Hopefully, you guys are too. Let me know what you think. But now, that's it for the, my Guardians of the Galaxy showcase video. And now we can wrap this up. Thanos, the intergalactic warlord that gave Loki his army. I didn't think it could get any worse than Ultron. You'll have our help. Who are you, fools? I am Groot. Okay, the tree can talk. We're the frickin' guardians of the galaxy. And the raccoon. I am Gamora, the last of my kind, and the being who threatens your world is my adoptive father. Okay, I'm done. Alright guys, and there you go, the showcase video on all five of my Guardians of the Galaxy minifigures, and if you enjoyed the showcase video or found yourself inspired to make your own Guardians of the Galaxy minifigures, be sure to let me know by dropping this video a like below and or your opinion in the comments, as both of which definitely mean a lot and definitely go a long way, especially if your comment is about Groot, because Groot is literally the only minifigure that I actually received some critiques about over Flickr, Twitter, and Facebook for only a few people, but I'm still kind of curious what you guys think, because as you already saw, he's literally the only minifigure of the year that I just went full out sculpting with so like I said your opinion is definitely definitely means a lot to me as uh, he is uh, definitely one of my most unique minifigures that I have made to date for sure but um yeah guys so Guardians of the Galaxy comes out right during the middle of Brick Fair and by the time you're watching this video I'm already at Brick Fair hanging out with you guys so I get I hope I'm having a great time um, but I mean yeah so the movie comes out right during Brick Fair which means I'm able to go see my first ever Marvel Cinematic Universe film with TR Legos fan uh, Team 101 Gaming JP 97 Studios, Pexis Films, and a bunch of other people, and I cannot wait for that. That is going to be fantastic, and I'm really looking forward to the entirety of this movie, as uh, it is the first movie that actually takes place outside of Earth slash Asgard, and that's great, because we get to see everything with all five of these badasses, and uh, who would have thought that we're actually ever going to get a Guardians of the Galaxy film? And it feels like just yesterday that they announced it at San Diego Comic-Con 2012. Speaking of which, San Diego Comic-Con is going on right now, and uh, there has been some pretty Pretty awesome stuff coming out of that. Did you guys see that Tumblr? That was fantastic. But anyway, back on topic, I can't wait to see Thanos, most importantly, in this movie. Even though I'm looking forward to the entirety of this movie, I am primarily looking forward to Thanos, uh, Josh Brolin's, uh, you know, seeing him as Thanos, I, I I don't know why, but I am just really looking forward to Thanos, knowing that he's going to be the main villain for the Avengers 3, so... Yeah, excitement slash hype, and I am going out of my mind with Brick Fair prep. But uh, speaking of Brick Fair, I really recommend that you guys follow me on Twitter slash Bookface. Links to both of those are always in the description below as well. And uh, I say this for a reason because you might you guys might have noticed there have been like a, some you know larger gaps between videos than usual, and that is because. My family and I have been put under some circumstances that are far worse than any we've had the past few years, and um, it's, it's definitely been causing some delays in, you know, video production time. And uh, I'm away at Brick Fair, and I have not had any time to make any video to go up during Brick Fair other than the one you're watching right now. So, if you follow me on Twitter and Bookface, you'll see all kinds of updates of what I'm up to and what's going on there, and it, it, it's definitely worth it because you don't see any gap in between content coming from me, um, so it's a lot easier to post photos on those uh, platforms than it is uh, to, you know, uh, upload and, you know, to edit and upload an entire video. So, other than that, though, guys, that is it for my Guardians of the Galaxy showcase. The last, I assume, the last, one of the last showcases, anyway, that features more than four minifigures of the year. So, we'll see how that pans out. I don't know what minifigures I'm making after this. We'll see. But I'm going to catch you guys later. All right. Bye. Bye. on all five of my Guardians of the Galaxy upgraded mini on all five of my Guardians of the Galaxy custom minifigures and uh, I will oh brilliant now we're barking that's that's great can you stop please job on the head so I didn't have to do anything to it this look this shot looks really bright I am rude What's going on guys? It's Michael MGF and today I'm going to be doing my long anticipated
It's not, well, I mean. <sighs> what do you guys think? Anyway, we're not gonna do it What's going on guys, it's Michael MGF, and today I'm gonna be doing my long, it's not long anticipated, I announced it like two months ago. Okay, why is this going out of focus so easily? My God. And uh, so I figured it wasn't exactly necessary to necessarily, ne exactly necessary to necessarily. I am the best at words, man. I cannot believe how skilled I am. Lego did a great job. Oh, whoa, I don't. I go. Okay, what's with the out of focus and this? What's going on here? Similar to what I did in the last year. Last year, the Avengers came out in 2012. But hell, we might as well call it last year. That's what it freaking feels like. Shut up, Groot. There are no cars coming. I am Groot. Star Lord, Rocket Raccoon. Gro mm, why did I hesitate with Groot? I was doing fine. So, other than that, though, if you enjoyed this video, and you know, that, I mean, that, that, that's just what I think. Uh, great. Fantastic. There we go. Give this video a like below and or your opinion in the I just bumped racks. Damn it, I've been setting this up for a while. Can you just, like, not? Sorry, Groot. You're not going to fit. But other than that, that goes. I can't words. Other than that, though, good. I'm done.